My name is David Lopez, and my life can be best described as ordinary, perhaps even monotonous. My daily routine is a predictable cycle, commuting between home and my office job, where my presence often goes unnoticed. When I first embarked on my career journey, I harboured ambitious dreams of ascending the corporate ladder. However, my personality isn't suited for shrewd, tactical manoeuvres in the workplace. As a result, I frequently find myself saddled with the less desirable tasks that my colleagues skillfully avoid. This predicament stems from my inability to refuse extra work, turning my accommodating nature into a professional setback. Despite my diligence and commitment, I remain a regular employee without any significant title or recognition. There was a time, though, when my life sparkled with more happiness and frequent smiles. This brighter chapter began when I married my long-term girlfriend, a relationship that had blossomed since the early days of my working life. Our marriage was a source of joy and contentment, infusing me with motivation and a sense of purpose in my job. However, this blissful period was short-lived. Aren't you tired of giving me such a meagre amount for expenses every month? My wife, Mary, would often complain a few years into our marriage. My underwhelming professional performance and the consequent financial limitations increasingly frustrated her. I'm sorry, I'm doing my best, I would respond, but her patience was wearing thin. How many years and how many times will you repeat that? She would retort. Mary had hoped for a more affluent life upon marrying me, especially considering my background as the son of a doctor. Indeed, my father is a respected physician who runs his own clinic. Despite his profession, we never lived a life of luxury. My father's personality is much like mine, and his approach to medicine was always driven by compassion rather than profit. He often treated patients at minimal rates, sometimes providing care for free to those financially constrained, believing that they could repay when able. As long as they are alive to do so, he would say, money can always be generated later. This altruistic perspective, while noble, meant that our family's lifestyle was modest. As a child, I never felt deprived or questioned our way of living. However, for Mary, who relishes spending on beauty treatments, cosmetics, clothes, and maintaining her appearance, our modest life was a source of discontent. She had perhaps anticipated a more opulent lifestyle, marrying a doctor's son, but the reality was far from her expectations. Despite the ordinariness of my day-to-day -day existence, I have always held a deep sense of pride for my father. He is a doctor who, unlike others in his profession, chose a path of compassion over profit. This background, however, was something my wife Mary was unaware of when she decided to marry me, categorising me simply as a doctor's son. As a result, she found herself entangled in a life vastly different from the one she had envisioned. Several years into our marriage, Mary's frustration over our modest lifestyle reached its peak. I've had enough. If this is all we can do, there's no point in staying together. Let's get a divorce, she declared. Her words struck me with a cold finality. A divorce? But please, wait, I pleaded. Her response was unyielding. How many years do you think I've waited? I'm aging just as you are. I need to start over while I still can. I refuse to be the wife of a low-income husband for the rest of my life. With those bitter words, Mary walked out of my life, leaving behind nothing but divorce papers. I was consumed by self-reproach, angry at myself for not seeing Mary's true intentions and for failing to elevate my professional status to prove her wrong. Five years have since passed, and in an attempt to mend my emotional scars, I immersed myself in work. Yet, lacking the savvy needed to excel, I remained a regular employee, haunted by the fear that Mary's harsh judgment of me might actually be true. During this time of reflection and regret, an unexpected envelope arrived in my mailbox. It was from Mary, someone I hadn't heard from in a long time. To my surprise, it contained a wedding invitation. Mary was remarrying. I found myself puzzled by her decision to invite me, her former husband, to her wedding. 
As I scrutinized the invitation, a familiar chapel name caught my eye. It was located in a notoriously luxurious hotel. Knowing Mary's penchant for extravagance, I had little doubt she had chosen a wealthy partner this time, likely intending to flaunt her newfound happiness and opulence, a stark contrast to the life she had with me. I wrestled with the decision to attend. After all, I was the one who had been left behind. Yet, perhaps in Mary's eyes, my failure to achieve professional success had been an unforeseen disappointment. After much contemplation, I let out a deep sigh and rose from my seat. Resignedly, I decided to go to the wedding. This is the last time, I thought to myself, fully aware that attending would bruise my already fragile pride. Despite the pain and confusion surrounding my past relationship with Mary, I made the decision to attend her wedding. There was a part of me that understood her perspective. After all, she had endured years by my side, perhaps hoping for a different life. I could even perceive her inviting me to her wedding as a sort of revenge, a way to demonstrate her newfound happiness and to show me what I could never provide. To an outsider, Mary's actions might have seemed unusually kind-hearted, but I knew better. On the day of the wedding, the weather was perfect. I arrived a bit earlier than necessary, and while nursing a coffee in the lounge, I found myself lost in thought, staring blankly out the window. Recognising some of Mary's friends, memories of our shared past briefly resurfaced. Then, unexpectedly, I overheard a conversation nearby. Mary really outdid herself with this wedding, didn't she? A luxury hotel this time. It's a real step up from her first one. Yeah, she always complained that her first husband was a doctor's son, but it turns out he was just an ordinary office worker with no money. Surprising, isn't it? Hearing this, a sharp pang of pain struck my heart. It was one thing to suspect Mary never truly cared for me, but to hear it confirmed so casually by others was a different level of hurt. The conversation continued, revealing even more unsettling details. Before she divorced her first husband, she already had her eye on her current one. She's really clever, well calculated. I was stunned. The realisation that Mary had been involved with her now husband even before our divorce was a crushing blow to my already fragile pride. She had not only looked down on me, but had betrayed me as well. As I struggled to maintain my composure, taking another sip of my trembling coffee, Mary appeared. Dressed for her wedding, she approached me with a sneer. You really came. You're such a good person, aren't you? Her words, dripping with sarcasm, stung deeply. Trying to keep my emotions in check, I replied, Consider this my final duty. I'm glad you found happiness. Despite my forced smile, Mary continued to belittle me. Isn't it wonderful? So much better than my time with you. Here's a little share of happiness for the poor bachelor. Be grateful, will you? Her laughter was mocking and cruel. Just then, a fresh-faced man approached her. It was Richard, her new husband. Mary, the relatives are waiting. Let's head to the bridal room, he said. Richard gave me a brief glance, his expression unreadable, before they both walked away, leaving me to grapple with the revelations and emotions of the day. As the groom, Richard and his father prepared to move past me, the older man paused and addressed me directly, his expression marked by curiosity. Excuse me, may I know your name? He inquired, his tone polite yet serious. Feeling a bit uneasy under his intense gaze, I responded, David Lopez. Upon hearing my name, his demeanour shifted dramatically. Lopez, is your father a doctor by any chance? he asked, his voice tinged with urgency. The intensity of his inquiry was startling, and I could only nod in affirmation. The revelation seemed to hit him like a physical blow. The colour drained from his face, and he staggered slightly, visibly shaken. In a sudden and dramatic outburst, he turned to Richard and exclaimed, Richard, the wedding is off, right now! His proclamation was so unexpected that it sent ripples of shock throughout the room. Richard, caught completely off guard, stammered, What? Dad, what are you talking about? 
As confusion and murmurs swirled around the venue, I stood up, my mind racing with uncertainty and concern. No, I didn't do anything, I protested, trying to clear any misconceptions that might have arisen from this bizarre situation. The groom's father, Charles, then did something wholly unexpected. He began to prostrate himself at my feet, causing an even greater stir among the wedding guests. Richard, bewildered and concerned, urged his father to stand. But Charles remained bowed, his forehead pressed to the floor, a gesture of deep remorse and submission. Mary, caught in the midst of this unfolding drama, was visibly furious and embarrassed. She lashed out in her frustration, yet her words did little to alleviate the tension. Amidst this chaos, I gently persuaded Charles to stand up. As he did, tears filled his eyes, and he began to plead for forgiveness. I beg for your forgiveness. I've been unfaithful to Dr. Lopez, he confessed, his voice cracking with emotion. I was taken aback. The groom's father, Charles, was a fellow doctor and an acquaintance of my father. He recounted a story from many years ago, dating back to my early childhood. Charles had been a trainee doctor at the time, and my father had recently started his own medical practice after leaving a prestigious position at a renowned university hospital. As Charles spoke, the pieces of a long-forgotten puzzle began to fall into place, revealing a connection between our families that I had never known. The wedding venue, filled with stunned silence, became the stage for a revelation that would change everything. Charles, who had been a medical student when my father was a practicing doctor, deeply admired him. Eager to learn from the best, he volunteered to train at my dad's clinic, absorbing various medical techniques. Tragically, during this time, Charles's wife gave birth to a baby with a congenital heart defect. The baby's condition was dire, requiring a complex heart surgery that many doctors hesitated to undertake due to the high risk and slim chance of survival. In his desperation, Charles turned to my father for help. My dad, known for both his skill and compassion, agreed to perform the surgery. Miraculously, he saved the baby's life. However, the medical expenses were substantial, and Charles, still a trainee with limited financial resources, was overwhelmed by the debt. With tears in his eyes, he approached my dad, humbly asking if he could repay the massive sum in instalments. My dad's response was characteristic of his kind nature. He laughed gently, telling Charles not to worry about the debt for now. Someday, when you become a great doctor and remember me, come back and repay me then. I guarantee you'll definitely become a great doctor, my dad had said, aiming to alleviate the pressure on the young trainee. Years passed and Charles went abroad to further his medical studies, eventually losing contact with my father. Despite the distance and time, he never forgot the debt he owed. He diligently saved money, intending to fulfil his promise. However, upon his return to the States, he discovered that my dad's clinic was gone, and they had lost touch. The inability to repay the debt weighed heavily on Charles for years. Fast forward to today at the hotel, Charles was shocked to see me, remarking how much I resembled my father. Overwhelmed with emotion, he begged for an opportunity to meet my dad and apologise in person. I responded calmly, explaining that it sounded like something my dad would indeed do, but I had to inform him that my father had passed away three years ago from cancer. I shared that until his last days, my father had continued to work in various clinics always, prioritising his patient's well-being. Upon hearing of my dad's passing, Charles was visibly shaken, standing in a daze as he processed the news. Kneeling on the floor, he broke down in tears. Richard, the groom, and apparently the child my father had saved years ago, was taken aback. Charles pointed out the scar on Richard's chest, a testament to my father's life-saving surgery. Richard seemed at a loss for words, now realising the full extent of my father's impact on his life. Charles bowed to me once again, his actions filled with gratitude and sorrow for my father's passing and the unfulfilled promise he had carried for so many years. Upon seeing Charles overwhelmed with emotion and intent on repaying the kindness he owed my father, 
I swiftly moved to lift him from his knees, extending a hand to help him stand. Mr. Charles, I said, I am truly touched. Just remembering my dad and knowing that the life he saved is here today, celebrating such a joyous occasion, fills me with happiness. This connection, this living proof of my dad's legacy, brings me joy. I am confident my dad would feel the same. As I spoke, Charles burst into tears once more, his emotions resonating with the surrounding audience who broke into cheers and applause. Amidst this, Mary looked on, her face contorted with anger, the only one not sharing in the moment's warmth. Soon, the wedding ceremony commenced. The day, which had begun with such turmoil for me, transformed into a moment of pride and newfound brightness. Following the ceremony, Charles, driven by a profound sense of gratitude and obligation, insisted on repaying the medical expenses and kindness my father had shown him. He handed over a substantial amount of money he had saved over the years for my father. Additionally, Charles's hospital began collaborating with my company, leading to a significant boost in my performance and eventually to my much-deserved promotion. This entire experience reinforced a valuable lesson my father had instilled in me. Acts of kindness and compassion, even if they don't benefit us directly, have a way of returning to us. I found myself cherishing this newfound happiness, recalling the serious yet compassionate look in my father's eyes when he was working. As for Mary, she may have initially enjoyed her second marriage, but fate had a twist in store. Her new husband eventually learned of her past manipulations and how her previous and current marriages were driven by financial motivations. Growing weary of her true nature, he divorced her. This news reached me through the grapevine, a reminder of the adage, what goes around comes around. Embracing my father's philosophy, I continue to live my life with the belief that every action, no matter how small, can contribute to someone else's happiness. Each day, as I see smiles on the faces of those around me, I am reassured that my life is moving in the right direction, guided by the principles and legacy of my father.